Alright, so you know all this stuff, we just need to run through it really quickly. So this is a displacement function. It gives the position of an object at any given time. Now this particular one looks something like this, where this is 4 and this point is 2 and 4 there. Now I can actually continue this on a little bit further there. It just goes down. Okay, so this is a displacement function. It tells us the position of an object at any given time. So where is the object at time 3? At time 3, it's 3 metres away from its point of origin. We can draw this on a line. Uh, so here's our line here. The object starts at point 0 and it moves forward away from it until it gets to uh, this point 4 at which point it turns around and starts going back and after four seconds it's here and then it starts moving away as it's getting negative values for our position. Now if we look at this graph here we can say that the distance that this object has traveled is this. That's the distance that it's traveled and the distance isn't directly shown on this graph. What is directly shown on this graph is the object's displacement. That is, its distance, or the, the displacement, from the origin to the point at which it is. And that displacement is given along what we call our, our y-axis, even though it's represented as x, because this is t. Now, if we take the derivative of our displacement function, we'll have a velocity function. That is, velocity equals the derivative of x with respect to time. Now in this specific example, it's 4 minus 2t, and that's our velocity function. And that tells the velocity of our object at any given time. This is what our velocity function looks like. Now, we should assume that time is, let's say, where time is greater than or equal to 0, where time is greater than or equal to 0, which means that this graph doesn't exist backwards in time. So here's our graph. Okay, what is it saying? It's saying at the time zero, that's when its velocity was at its highest. It was traveling at four meters per second. As time goes on, it gets to this point here, which lines up with this change of direction. That's when its velocity is zero, right? Velocity zero. And then here is where its velocity is negative. And you can see that in that drawing that I drew earlier. It starts off fast, it turns around, and then it starts to speed back up again. And then the velocity here is negative. That just means it's moving in the other direction to how it started. Positive, negative velocities. Now, speed is just the absolute value of these velocities. It doesn't Speed doesn't care about which direction it's moving in. It just wants to know how fast we're traveling. So velocity is the change in position with respect to time. And speed is equal to the magnitude of that velocity. Okay. Last step is our acceleration function. Now the acceleration function is equal to the change in velocity with respect to time. So we're taking this function and we're finding the derivative of it. Now because this function was the derivative of this function, another way to say that would be to say that it's the second derivative with respect to time. So the second derivative. Uh, and here the second derivative of that is just going to be negative 2. And a graph of that is going to look like that negative 2. Now that's hard for a lot of people to interpret, but all it's saying is that this object is constant, is uh, decelerating with a constant rate. Now we shouldn't have anything over here because we don't have negative times here. So it's decelerating with a constant rate. It started off at 4 meters per second, moving in this direction, and it was slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, till it stopped. And then it's decelerating again, and it's moving this other way. Okay, so it's decelerating at negative 2 meters per second per second. Meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do with this. Far too many for me to talk about in this video. We've got bigger fish to fry later on. But you need to have a play with some of these displacement velocity acceleration questions. You really need to look at the graph and then just determine what it is that you're trying to find.